we are celebrating summer with 40 Thrive's top 10 episodes of season two. From body changes to career changes, mindset shifts to creating habits that will improve, well, pretty much everything. These episodes will make you think, laugh, and definitely grow as a grown-ass woman over 40 and beyond. This time, number six. You're listening to the 40 Thrive Podcast, the show created for women 40 and beyond, ready to shake things up. And now, your host, Jackie McDougall. Welcome back to another episode of 40 Thrive. I'm really excited that you're here. Today's episode kind of blew my mind, and I think it might really be able to help you as well. But before we get to it, this episode and our entire top 10 of season two is brought to you by Kendra. As I'm recording this, I am hearing from so many women all over who are not only trying to beat the heat outside, my gosh, it's hot, but from within. Hot flashes, night sweats, it is real But did you know that suffering is not actually required? Let me say that again. Suffering could be a choice you're making. Mood swings, vaginal dryness, sleepless nights, they can all be addressed and sometimes pretty simply. That's where Kindra comes in. They have estrogen-free essentials for your peri to post menopause journey. If you're feeling overheated, tired, sluggish, can't sleep, or experience vaginal dryness that's just getting in the way of the life you know you could be living, Kindra has a whole suite of products to help. And you can get 20% off Kindra site-wide with promo code 40thrive20 at checkout. That's ourkindra.com with promo code 40thrive20, F-O-R-T-Y-T-H-R-I-V-E, and the number 20. Go get it. You could be feeling so much better sooner than you can even imagine. Okay, let's get to today's episode. Patricia Lohan is the creator of Feng Shui Mastery and author of The Happy Home, a guide to creating a happy, healthy, wealthy life. I met Patricia over the summer and she was nice enough to give me a consultation. I was feeling, I don't know, maybe you can relate. I was feeling stuck. I'm sharing an office with my husband business felt like it was a little bit all over the place. I had a lot of things going on, but it just felt like a lot of struggle with not much gain. And so I invited Patricia into my office and she gave me some simple like no brainer tips to create a little bit more flow and energy in my office. And I have to tell you, it worked. I don't know if you're a fan of feng shui or not, But this is really a powerful, powerful thing that's been around for like 5,000 years. And so when I started to make some of these small changes, some of them that Patricia will share in this episode, it changed everything, like everything. And so I cannot get enough of Patricia's tips. I've now moved into the bedroom and the other areas of the family to create more harmony and balance and prosperity and abundance. And she's going to share with you today how you can get that as well. You know, I'm a little bit woo-woo. I love to dabble in woo-woo, but I'm also a really logical human being. And so I love the way Patricia embraces feng shui in a way that any of us can do. So listen to her tips maybe take some of them into your own home. And then I want to hear in the 40 Thrive community how you have embraced feng shui and what it's done for your life. So without further ado, let's get into my conversation with Patricia Lohan. Patricia, welcome to 40 Thrive. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. I feel like saying welcome back because we just met a few days ago. And you were so kind to give me a feng shui consultation and I've made some changes and we're going to get into that in a little bit, but I feel so much better already and I'm super excited. But before we get into all of that, what is feng shui? For me, feng shui is acupuncture for your home. So essentially people think it's about moving furniture and about placement of weird hanging frogs or something in your house. Like that's (laughs) not me. Um, I am an energy worker for someone's home essentially. And um, when the energy is blocked, things are not flowing. So it could be money, it could be relationships, it could be arguments, it could be just drama with your kids, um, career, or, you know, you're working really hard and you're not getting the visibility you want, or you're not making the money you want. And that's where most people come to me. They've like hit a plateau in their life and they're like, 
oh, I have this house that I've been living in and I've been doing all this personal development and growth, but my house hasn't. So we work with the house energetically to get it up to, into alignment and energy balance. That's what feng shui is. Right. And you basically could have quoted me just now as far as like when you do all the work on yourself. I mean, personal development is my jam. That's why I do this podcast. But there are certain areas of our lives we don't consider and -hmm. we keep doing the same thing over and over again, not understanding why the result is the same over and over again. And so how did you first get into this? (laughs) <laughs> so I actually got my first books about feng shui when I was 15. Mm. So this is for me, like a soul's calling, you know, it's like my 16 year old self knew what she was being called towards, but like my logical brain was like, no, no, no. But I really loved it. I dived straight in. I had all the books. I feng shui my own bedroom when I was a teenager and like did all that stuff. Um, but I forgot about it for many, many years until I wanted to call in love. And I remember I was moving into an apartment and I remember going, oh, that feng shui stuff. And I ended up going home and finding those books and my mom still had them. And that's weird because we moved house a lot. Like we moved to the house 22 times. So I think there's this whole thing of us moving house a lot. So I've experienced a lot of energetic shifts between houses. And when I became a feng shui consultant and dived deeper, deeper into the practice, I could look back at those houses and be like, oh my God, what went on there and this house and the change in our families. So that was really profound for me. But my passion started then when I decided to look for love and set up my apartment to call in love. Mm. And very soon afterwards, I met my husband, Ken. And when I went to visit his house, he had feng shui his place. And I was like, oh my God, this is (laughs) crazy. And honestly, all my friends were like, how did you meet Ken? What did you do? And a lot of them were on this spiritual personal development journey as well. And I was like, well, I did that inner stuff, but I also set my place up, set it up for love. I made sure I made that intention. When I walked in the first day moving in, I said to my flatmate, I'm not leaving here until I'm moving in with my husband. And she just laughed her head off at me. She's like, yeah, whatever. (laughs) And I'm like, I'm serious. So we both were interested. Ken was into feng shui in his 20s when he went on his own personal development journey. And from there, everyone was asking me, how'd you meet Ken? How'd you? And I was like, well, this feng shui thing. And that interwove with my own practice. So I was working with clients, helping them. I had like this Mary Poppins bag of other tools like you know, kinesiology, Reiki, crystals, you know, all of this stuff. And I would work with clients one-to-one doing that work, helping them release on the inside to clear and to support them. Um, their own personal growth, but then they were going back to houses that were not supportive. So that's kind of what happened. And I would be doing a session on my clients and checking and balancing them. And then next I'd be like, tell me about your bedroom. What's going on in your house? How long have you lived there? And they would look at me like I had like 10 heads at this stage. (laughs) And that was really, it just grew. That was the big thing. And so I started working with my clients and then myself and my husband both dove in much deeper and we feng shui our own home. And it was like night and day, the shift that happened in our lives. Like I was a holistic therapist cycling around Dublin. I couldn't afford a bicycle, let alone a car to like buy a car to having a six figure windfall on the date that we'd written in our prosperity, like crazy stuff. And everyone was like, what have you done? And we're like, it's the feng shui. Like Ken got, he had be, not been paid in the company he'd been working for, for like six months. He was like nearly bankrupt. All We did the feng shui, he got paid all of it in like weeks. It was just nuts. So from then it just became this passion project. I never set out to be here. Like it was, I was happy doing my sound healing and my therapy work with my clients, but I wanted to travel and we wanted to go and travel the world. And obviously that was not as accessible online at the time. So we decided to travel. And that's when I started doing feng shui as my practice and teaching it. And it's just been amazing. Uh, just amazing. <laughs> wow. So I hear a few things that you point out that I, I think is really valuable for my mm-hmm. listeners. And not only that you're doing what you love and you're setting yourself up and your space up for all of this energetic healing. And, and I love all of that. I'm like just a touch woo woo. So I'm into all of this. <laughs> Great. But, yeah. but at the same time, I hear you honoring that child, that teenager who loved Mm -hmm. something. And I see a lot of women who, you know, my community is women over 40, who sort of fight the instinct to go back to that joyful practice. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that you remember, okay, I felt this way then, 
And I sort of pushed it away because that's what we do. And you're allowing that back into your life. I just think that's such a powerful first step. And I've like shivers through my whole body because part of this, like myself and my husband have been talking about different things, obviously like visioning and what we'd like to see unfold for ourselves. We had two wedding ceremonies. We'd like a shamanic one and then the legal one. And the legal one was like tomorrow, five years ago. We were laughing today. We're like, do we even talk about our future? Like what we wanted, what our dream? No, nothing. Like we're like, we could have never imagined we're here at the beach in Greece. Um, But one of those things was about the fact that I also, at that time, I love like doing up rooms and houses and like our current house, which we anchor our feng shui in. So our house Mm -hmm. in Ireland is fully feng shui, just moved in here. So I'll do what I can with the temporary place. But most of the time we move into a place where there for a while, I'll do the feng shui on it. But in our house, which I anchor what unfolds for us is like, the, the baseline and that's where we just tap into that energy to support us um but I was saying like I just love doing it up and doing it now we have an Airbnb and all this and that's part of that 16 year old self we were talking I was like that's what I really love to do I want to have some more properties that I can do that with because that excites me so it's really yes. going back to tune into the stuff that excites you and I just love interest boards and <laughs> picking stuff out and you know that's really exciting so yeah tapping into that And now it's like, I'm even kind of deeper into it being like, what were the really the things I loved? Like it was the feng shui and it was also this like setting it all up and finding the things and put it together. Right. And I think that for the most part, that thing that brought you joy as a teenager can be a revenue generator. Mm -hmm. You could make a living just teaching people who do Airbnb how to feng shui to keep the people coming. We were booked out over the whole of COVID, like booked solid like we had like four with a four day gap and Ken just got a message saying they're asking for it like, until the date that we were planning to go back and they're like can we stay longer and we're like we might stay longer in Greece like booked <laughs> solid so right. it's like it's really good advert for feng shui as well yeah that's amazing so let's dive a little bit into the feng shui I did pull my community and I was asking them what are some things that they would like to bring more of into their lives. Mm -hmm. And of course, we're all into the whole abundance and prosperity. I mean, who isn't, right? But peace and harmony were equally as important to them. And Mm -hmm. so what are some simple things that we could do without having your brilliance in our living room on our own to bring more, let's just start with abundance and prosperity. So For me, in general, I love starting at the front door and that helps with the peace and harmony and the prosperity because it's that whole energy of like first impressions count. So when you get up to your front door, how do you feel? How does the front door look? Do you have a lovely welcome mat, some nice flowers, a welcome sign, a doorbell that works? This sounds like very basic stuff. But honestly, the amount of people that I have gone to their house and I'm like, it's cobwebs and broken stuff and you don't see it. And I think this is something I would certainly recommend everyone does is just pretend it's the first time you've ever walked Mm. up your driveway or in your house and look at it from that perspective. And then you're like, oh, how can I improve this? It could be subtle things like flowers or welcome mat or just even cleaning your front door. Um, The front door is the mouth of your house and this is where the energy comes in. So when we talk about energy, it's money, it's career, it's health, it's harmony, it's all the things. Um, And your house is either like calling it in or repelling it. So we want to bring it in and we want it to be attractive. So Mm -hmm. for example, does the door creak? Where are the sounds like, is that, it's crying. It's like, you're not paying any attention to me and you're just (laughs) passing it. And every time you have that, It's like literally impacting your own energy and it's depleting Mm. it. So that is one of the first things I would say around your house is pay attention. Literally, I have a a shaman who's always screaming at us like, pay attention, pay attention. And um, (laughs) But it's so true because our house is speaking to us. I do energy work on people, but I do it on houses as well. And our houses are communicating with us. Anytime someone, a client is going through something in my community, I'm like, go back and check. Like, what's the house saying? Like, meditate and connect with the soul of your home. Mm -hmm. Um, And it goes even back to the very beginning of like, how was the sale process? Was it easy? Was it smooth? Is it the house you wanted? I had a huge uh aha from one client who's like, it wasn't even the house I wanted. This has been my temporary house. And I've just not really cared for it because it's, I'm in limbo with it as opposed Mm -hmm. to, 
you know what? I am accepting, I am loving, and I'm going to be so grateful for this space. And that alone will create a shift because that's your connection with this energy space. Because if you put like the solid brick under a microscope, it is just a denser form of energy. It is still moving. It still has a vibration and frequency. So it's just a denser form, which is harder to change. So that would be my very first thing. Now, in terms of prosperity, you've probably heard this. And the nice thing about feng shui, sometimes it just like makes sense, aka keep your toilet seat down. Yeah. So that is like where the energy comes into your house, so into the front door. And one of the things is when you open the front door, what do you see? So if you see a window, a mirror, or a stairs, these three things, like straight, it's not ideal. Okay. Hmm. Now I am not of the person like, you don't have to move house. I've never told one client <laughs> to move house. You do not have to knock any walls, but I'm going to give some suggestions if that is the case, because that's where the energy comes in and you want to make sure it moves around and it doesn't fly out or Mm. be reflected out again. So open the front door. If you see a mirror facing you, you've done all this lovely effort at your front door, like calling it in, making the doorbell work, putting a sign, like, you know, if the postman can't find you, neither can the energy. Okay. So be really mindful of like, if you can't find you, there's something you need to put a bigger sign outside. You need to clear the way for it to get into you. That's interesting because I live down a long driveway. And so whenever we have deliveries or anything, I have to tell them long driveway house on the right. So Mm. am I preventing energy from coming down? You could put some extra signs so they come down. How can you illuminate that path? How can you make Mm. it clearer for someone who's coming in? Because it's the same goes for the energy. And when you open the door, if you have a mirror there, it is basically saying, oh, we don't want you. Goodbye. Mm. Bye. Get back out. And getting <laughs> pushing it back out again. That alone has had shifts for clients. They're like, wow, oh my God, I've just been pushing it away. I've been making it hard for myself. And the same goes for, uh, there's like a window. Now that's not ideal, but you could put like a curtain up. You could put mm. a big plant in front of it. You want to just slow that energy so it doesn't go straight out the window. And what are the things you could put in in front of it to stop it? Um, and then the stairs, maybe a half moon uh, rug at the bottom so it like okay. dissipates the energy and just like kind of sends it back and around that energy of a circle is like oh flow this way so mm-hmm. we're just going to invite it to move around a little bit and that for me is really important in terms of prosperity because it has to get in um, mm-hmm. and then when it comes to prosperity the other things will be something like leaking taps so water is very connected with prosperity so you don't want um, the money to be dripping away even the smallest little leak, honestly, it's so funny. My mom's house is feng shui. My parents are not into this at all. But she rang a few weeks ago. She knows she's in like my Facebook groups and she's like, <laughs> you're amazing. Good luck. You know, but like I go home and I do the feng shui for her. But um, she was saying something. She's like, oh, the tap is dripping, blah, blah, blah. And then I saw her. I was like, you need to get it fixed. ASAP. She's like, I know what it was. Anyways, she got someone to fix it. She messaged me the other day. She's like, oh my God, this person came and paid me. This person gave me this, da, 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 all this money. And I was like, I told you that tap. She was like, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, I'm on it. And then she's like, I found one or two other drips. I'm going to get them fixed as well. And I was like, brilliant, <laughs> like in her own suites. So it's like these tiny little things where there's leaks or little drips. All of that is going to be leaking. And the same goes for, you know, your wallet. If it has a hole in it, the money is leaking out of it. Right. So it, whatever, it's all speaking to us. Your house is speaking to you. As you move around, like for me, it's also looking at like any of those friction points. So like a dripping tap, you know, a broken door, a handle that doesn't work, like handles, grip on your finances, a grip on life you know, that energy or things that are hard. Like, so for example, if the front door is hard to open, it's hard to get it in. It's a struggle. Like it's hard, like things are, you're making it more difficult than it could be. You maybe need some oil. So that is where I invite people is to have a look because all of those little points are impacting your energy and impacting your abundance. And yeah, as well. I love that. The funny thing is it's really, it makes sense. You're like, oh, close the toilet, fix the door, fix the leaks. Like, duh. But at the same time, it's lovely to hear your explanation of it because we know intrinsically that that's probably a good thing to fix. Yeah. But to hear about the energy that you can create by fixing it is is rather nice. So thank you for that. Like really, really nice. Yeah. <laughs> and so there are a lot of people who have teenagers at home or spouses mm-hmm. at home. We discussed this the other day, my husband. Yes. 
who usually goes off to work, has been sharing an office with me since March. And so what are some simple ways that people can kind of address the fact that everybody's in the house and maybe things aren't as harmonious as usual? Mm -hmm. Do you have any tips there? Yeah, for sure. So I suppose one of the things that I would say is like, this too shall pass. <laughs> you know, this too shall pass. And a lot of people at the moment have been asking me about similar questions. It's like, the house is a bit of a mess, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, you know what? First of all, for me, in terms of things that causes issues like energetically in a house, it's not like everyday life stuff. It's, so it's not the clothes that are on the clothes horse that need to be sorted or mm. the dishes that haven't been done or that kind of thing. Like that's life that will get done and get moved. And that energy is moving all the time. Right. For me, it's those cupboards that haven't been touched for a year that like you open the drawer and you go, oh, like that kind of place. For me, that's where I would invite you to kind of go to and look at those areas because that will free up more energy to move and make mm. it easier. Because if there's that sense of like, so again, we have kind of that idea of chi and energy, almost like a river coming in. And if it gets blocked somewhere, it creates this pond and it can create that kind of stagnancy and you know smelly pond stink disgusting it gets all rotten that's what's mm. kind of you know it's getting all congealed in these different parts so if you think of it like that then you're like oh god yeah I could go and like tackle that cupboard and you'll be amazed what can move and clear from that and mm. um, I have a really funny story I had this lovely woman in one of my groups and she had met me in person like years ago um, and I'd be talking about Ken and she's like, oh my God, I want my very own Ken. I want my very own Ken. <laughs> and I was like, all right, great. Like, cool. And we did a challenge in my group and it was a decluttering. So it was like clearing out different parts, you know, those kind of stagnant little spots. And she did her wardrobe, which is a big one for calling in love. And that was the one that I did. Part of what I did for Ken was like make space in my wardrobe. Mm -hmm. Um, she cleared it out and like she messaged me a few weeks later and she's like, oh my God, you'll never guess what. I met a guy. His name is Ken. Yes. <laughs> and I was like, what? And then she goes, I just did like, I made the space for that person in my life. I cleared it out. She's like, he lived up the road. He'd been living up the road all along. Wow. Like, so, so he's like just up the road all along <laughs> and she didn't know him. And it was just this crazy thing like she made the space and the universe was like and she'd heard the demand for a Ken because he, she was like I want my own Ken and I was like okay like good luck with that one. like not like luck that you won't find it but like the chances of having a Ken right yeah. but you know be careful what you wish for or be be specific about what you wish for because you'll actually get that yes and this is actually so important when it comes to also tackling those spaces is like that sense of clarity with what you want because you know especially when we do you know, I'm a big fan of Marie Kondo. Like I love mm. what she does. I don't fold my underwear in squares or <laughs> triangles or any of that. I am not that organized. I'm actually a kind of naturally untidy person. So that's what I'm like, don't worry about the life stuff. It's the other deeper stuff. Like I don't have any of that kind of heavy stuff in corners or anything like that. You know, that's, I'm really good with that. But just like my clothes are there, and you know, Ken is has given up picking up after me. But um, <laughs> when it comes to that side of it, like the decluttering thing is like when you clear out space, you've made a space for something else to come in. But it, the universe doesn't like it, it bores a vacuum, so it's going to fill it back up again with other things if you're not specific. So I always invite people to like write your list of intentions. What do you want to call in? Write that list. And I had a client who did that. And she was like, I don't believe it. I've just got like the money for the washing machine, money for the kids' toys for Christmas, all these things. Because she was very specific with what it was when she started working with the energy of her house. What, one of the things that I really love that you have said a couple times is that you don't have to change who you are. We're not sitting here saying like, okay, now you need to become this type A, clean house all the time. You're just talking about very specific areas of your house that are blocking energy. And I think that's really important because mm -hmm. the last thing we need right now is another person telling us we're doing it wrong. And so I love that you're like, be you, like throw your shoes in the laundry room if you want. But I'll tell you this, if you make these changes, this will be helpful. It's a great way to That's look at it. things. Yeah. And like, for me, it's about working with what you have. I was featured in an article in Forbes, which was like, yay, amazing. And awesome. there was like another expert quoted in it. 
And she said this thing that I was like, this, this is why feng shui has a bad reputation. And I, ah. <laughs> and she said like, oh, it's not good to have the toilet facing you when you walk in the front door. And I was like, you can't do anything about that. And don't worry, you, if that is the case in your house, you are not doomed for life. Like you are not, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. And this is the beauty of feng shui is that there are so many layers to this practice that is 5,000 years old. It's like your toilet's there, that's okay. And you no, know, I've had people ask me and, you know, very sincerely because of misinformation about it, going, well, my prosperity area is in my kitchen. So should I work in my kitchen? And I'm like, no, like work where it's logical to work from. Or mm. my health area has like all of the laundry and stuff. Is that bad? I'm like, no, it is what it is. We just mm. work with what you've got and use that and amplify it. And like the nice thing about the practice is that you don't have to work any harder. It's just really an amplification of what you're doing. So if you're already in business and you're doing great, you're working away. For me, it's like this amplifier. It's like, let's use a resource that we have, like our house, mm -hmm. to support us to grow and expand even more. Right. And that's great. And so how do these people know if their work area is in their kitchen and all of that? So this is what we do um, for our clients. Mm -hmm. They'll send us all their information. We'll map out their plans and tell them where it is because every house is unique, just like a person. Mm -hmm. So if you go online, I encourage you to like, come to my community because I prefer you to ask me yes. questions. There's di two different schools of feng shui as well. And the school of feng shui, mm -hmm. that's kind of like you stand at the front door and over in this far corner is this area and this area. And then you can add this color here. And that for me is like, oh, I have like terrors about that. And people are like, oh, my friend did this and this happened. And I'm like, oh my God, don't do that. Like, where should I put a water feature? I bought it. I'm like, don't put it in. It could be really bad. Like it could, like, it could be really good, but it could also cause absolute havoc. And I'm like, if things are status quo is like, okay, right now, don't mess with it until you have a professional. So there's these different schools and you can go and try and figure it out. That's and that's where it gets really complex. And for me, that's what we do. So it was like the 16 year old show with my book. I read the book. I got to this place. And I was like, oh, this gets confusing now. And right. I just did things that I could do. And that's what we do with our clients is kind of like, here's the basic things and just send me all your information. And I tell you, this is what you do. This, 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 this is where the area is. How to fix it. Yes, so, that's perfect. And of course, I'm going to be sharing all the places to connect with you and to get in your group in the show notes and, and how to hire you and all of that. But, you know, I, I think that's what's really important is there are so many mixed messages out there, no matter mm -hmm. what the expertise is. And yeah. so it's great to learn some basic skills, but then leave the rest of it to the professionals. Let, you know, for you, it's like simple. It just comes off. But for us, it would take years of studying to really kind of figure it out. And, and now I'm sitting here, I have a water, a little Buddha water thing in my mm -hmm. living room. And I'm wondering if it's in the wrong place, but speaking of my home, so I work from home and, mm -hmm. and as I mentioned, my husband is sharing an office with me. And so you were kind enough to give me a consultation and mm -hmm. I was facing the window with my desk and you're like, uh, yes. no, with the door behind me, we have this big armoire that was sort of like taking up space when you came into the room, like the flow was just completely off. And I'm telling you, it wasn't just the little changes. It, I moved some furniture. I listened to what you had to say and you can share with the audience, like specifically why these are important. But I will tell you this, I started an abundance journal. And so mm -hmm. if I get a check from some overpayment or something, I write it down in my abundance journal. Or mm -hmm. if somebody picks up lunch unexpectedly, I'll write it down in my abundance journal. Like all of these ways that mm -hmm. abundance is coming into my life, because I think we're so focused on it coming in as like a check for money that we earned that we don't pay attention to all these other ways. So my husband and I will be in a restaurant, well, not recently, but a while back, yeah. And we'll get like a free appetizer or a dessert on the house. And we're like, hashtag abundance. It's kind of a game in our house. And so ever since, you know, we just met, what, like maybe four days ago. Yeah. I made the shifts. Uh, I put in those new pillows that you liked that say thrive right on them. I went and bought some plants. I said to my husband, I feel like somebody's going to gift me a succulent, like not a pointy succulent. I looked that up. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, just some living, breathing things in, in the office and I go for a meeting, a socially distanced meeting, and she hands me a succulent and says, <laughs> I, and says I know you've been going through a lot. I bought you this. And then in the mail, my sister-in-law sent this beautiful handmade butterfly, which is like one of my things. And 
It's so beautiful and it looks amazing in my office and I put it in the southeast corner and things are happening. And I think it's really important to recognize when things are happening as how little or big it may be. And so what are some of the shifts that you helped me make and that you would help anyone make in their office? Yeah, for sure. So first of all, like the minute I see you now, you just look so different today (laughs) from the, the day we were on the call because I was like, where is the door? What's behind you? And the big thing for me is that when we are not sitting in a position that is for our best interest, like if with our back to the door, we, we literally can't see what's coming at us. Mm. So we're in this vulnerable position, but also when you're back to the door, the energy is coming in, landing on your shoulders, on your lap and feeling that sense of overwhelm. So you're not able to kind of feel your most productive or in your power or see what's coming at you. And also there's no space for expansion. So your desk was facing the window. So there was like an expansive yes. view, but still it was still like the desk was pushing to the wall. There was no where to kind of go. Whereas this sense of spaciousness in front of you now gives you that sense of creativity, but also you've got this beautiful support, that beautiful piece of art behind you. You're supported and you can see what's coming at you. So you're prepared. Mm. You're prepared. I didn't mention like you had a great chair and a great desk. So I was like, this is all good. Mm. Um, But it was more about that positioning for me. And then you had the, the cushions you talked about with like, you know, inspirational quotes. And for me, you know, I really would love for people to think about like if clients came to your office, would it reflect your ethos, your business mission? And what would you want them to think? Does it would reflect it? And if it right. does, amazing. And that's, that's like kind of a luxury for some people. There's people currently like, oh my God, I'm sitting in my office, in my bedroom. And I literally was one of my clients today had shared photos of her office. It's in her bedroom. But actually she, I was like, you've done an amazing job. And I'm like, could you get a screen to put up at nighttime between the office and the bedroom, the, between your bed and the office? So then you can switch it off or even just put an off sign, like closed on your desk, <laughs> clear everything away, you know, like create these little conscious boundaries between mm the space um, and have it nicely organized. Obviously that, I don't know, did you move that big armoire out? I just moved it so it wasn't so close to the door. Yes. Because when you open the door, all you felt was that big armoire, you know? Yes. And then my husband was using this like six foot uh, folding table. <laughs> yeah. I went onto Facebook and said, does anybody have a desk? So he has a little workstation. It's just amazing, these little shifts. So for example, if you couldn't move your desk and you had to push your desk up to the wall and have the the door behind you, like there's no other option, you could have like a small mirror on your desk. So when you're sitting at your desk, you can still see the door. I had that with a client. It was uh, with several clients, but this was kind of nuts because she literally burst out. I said, is everything feel overwhelming and lands on your shoulders and blah, blah, blah. She burst out crying. She said, how did you know? I'm like, because I can see how you're sitting. Like literally your desk is telling me your current situation in your work. Um, and that then ripples effect then to the other fact of like, for me in your office is the artwork. And I don't know if I share this with you the other day, but on the podcast, it'll be good for people to hear this. But, you know, in your office, make sure that the things you have in your office are related to your business, you know, mm. not like exercise equipment and you know, suitcases, children's toys, everyone else's stuff, like this should be focused. If you have your own office, focus it on your business. Um, And the artwork is really important. So like you have beautiful, like nature, like water lilies there, like Mm -hmm. beautiful flowers. My nephew's wife uh, painted that for me and I absolutely love it. Like water lilies are just Mm -hmm. so uh, symbolic Symbolic, for me and and I just love it. And so the fact that I can have that behind me during these videos and, and calls just makes me feel good. It's beautiful. So one example was a lady, I was looking at her office and I'm like, oh my God, it's perfect. She has like the best position, great desk, like really big office. It was amazing. But on her wall, I was like, tell me about painting. What's that painting? And it was a picture of winter. So it was like all snow, the trees were empty. I was like, that's like death in, from, <laughs> from Ireland. The Celtic calendar is like, it's Samhain, it's winter, it's death. Like mm. nothing is living, nothing is flourishing. I'm like, well, ideally you'd want like flourishing, like trees growing or summertime harvest, like fruit, all of that would be good in your office. Um, And then I was like, so this is not ideal. And she's like, yeah. And it was my ex-husband's. And I was like, oh my God, something that didn't work out (laughs) on the wall of your office. Like, how could you imagine? And this is affecting our subconscious like every Mm -hmm. single day. So just like you said about the lilies, like for me, the symbolism 
how the lilies is about like you know the lily goes through the darkness and comes up into the light and it flourishes and it's full of be- full beauty after it's gone through a journey you know right. so for using artwork is so powerful in your home to call in your desires. And I love inviting people like use your house like a vision for it. Like what it is you want to create? What do you want to call in? Is the artwork resonating with that? I love that. And I'm also passionate about women over 40 who create. And so I sometimes go into my community. I'm like, does anybody sell anything that is like meaningful that I could share in my office. I'm willing to buy it all because I love that collaboration and that camaraderie of other creatives. I love people who do creative things. Oh my God, yes. But you know what's been so magical is I've seen in my community is women who had never picked up a paintbrush. Like, so they've implemented the feng shui and all of a sudden, so, you know, for me, feng shui is about bringing balance of the masculine and feminine energy. So we're working yin and yang. It's like ancient practice. We're working with the five elements, just like an acupuncturist. We're bringing these elements and it brings this balance and it pushes these women into this alignment and connection with who they really are. And all of a sudden they're creating these masterpieces, like no word of a lie. It's like, I just decided, I just had this urge. (laughs) And one woman cleared out a whole, whole cupboard, like this whole storage cupboard and made a painting room. She posted the painting. I was like, are you selling these? Like I would buy it. It was stunning. And another woman actually ended up having a full exhibition. It's activating you. It's bringing you into balance. So when your house is in balance, it brings you into that balance and connects you. We were just saying about tapping back into your 16 year old self. Mm-hmm. These of them were like, never picked up a paintbrush before. Like maybe I did when I was a kid or whatever, but like this was a masterpiece <laughs> like, that you would totally buy. Right. It's amazing. And you know, you talk about the masculine and the feminine. I have 12 siblings, but I have seven brothers. And wow. those are the ones who are closest in age to me. I had a lot of masculine energy around me. And so sometimes that's where I think my autopilot is sort of masculine. Mm-hmm. And as I'm putting things into my office to feel like this is my space, I'm really amazed at how feminine it's feeling, mm-hmm. you know? And so it really sort of brings that side out in me. And I love it. It's, it's like such a great feeling. So I want to show you a picture. I don't know if it's going to work. But that's the view. Oh my God, it's amazing. From my desk right now. It's like totally transformed. Lovely. That lamp right there is handmade. Um, I bought the little tree and put it in a 40 Thrive mug. Beautiful. There's there's some life in there. And then you could see over the cork board, there's a butterfly that I just received. Stunning. Um, I love that. Is there anything you change there? No, I really like that. I think that feels really good. And I was just going to say like how nice it is even just that feminine way of like having a couch in your office, like we were saying, I was like, that's so nice. It's just this softening of like, I can just sit over here and relax if someone comes in. But I just really like that. It's funny because it it never occurred to me until we met, but I put my desk against the window, probably after COVID started. Mm -hmm. So I put my desk against the window and the door behind me. And I realized like, I think subconsciously I was trying to escape. (laughs) I was was like, maybe I could put this desk outside. Like I adore my family, but like all families were together all the time now. Mm -hmm. They're doing school from home. My husband's working from home. I'm working from home. And so I think I was looking for outdoor inspiration to keep me from feeling like stale and stagnant and all of that. But yeah, it, it, it feels so much better. Most people are working from home now. And so I love the ideas that you have for their bedroom. Or what if somebody has to work at a kitchen table or a dining room table? Is that okay? Do you have tips for that? I would say to you, like, sit with your back to the to the kitchen and see what's coming at you. Okay. Um, and a lot of people are like, no, I'll turn around so I can't see the activity. But I would prefer you to have that sense of support and see what's coming at you. And then the other thing is for me, especially working at the dining room table or the kitchen table, is just, again, that boundaries thing. So, you know, you don't sit down and eat your breakfast and leave it there. That's where I'm really clear, like, the bit of tidying is, like, mm-hmm. clear away one part of the day and sit down and do your work. Like, maybe you have, like, a candle or something that you anchor beside you and like this is my work mode and this is here I am working don't talk to me I've had clients who put little screens up like you know a little folder up or something like I'm here in work mode and then you pack it all away at night time so don't leave it all there sitting at the, at the dining room table if mm-hmm. you're going to have your dinner I have clients who have like mansions to one of the ladies in the studio in New York she completely transforms her um, bedroom area into a office sitting room 
in the daytime. So we worked on this whole, how can we make it completely different? And that's mm. what the invitation is. If you're working from your kitchen table, it's like, how can you make it feel totally different? So, you know, when you go to sit at your dining room table, you put out placemats, you put some flowers on the table, you set it up differently. So it feels like a completely different kind of energetic space. All of this is really simple. And, you know, you don't have to overhaul your entire life to no. start making small changes to bring in amazing energy. I just love what you're doing because it's so much more than, and you say it, but I, I feel it. It's so much more than moving furniture around. It's a lifestyle. It's a way of thinking. Yeah. Just making these changes, it's helped me uh, change the way I'm thinking a little bit. Like I feel mm -hmm. like I, I very much have a growth mindset and then on occasion, I find myself with a fixed mindset. And I think we all do this, right? Like we yeah. work really hard and then, you know, certain circumstances are happening and then we be, sort of become a victim to those circumstances and we mm -hmm. stop coming from that place of growth. And I think the energy that has shifted in my office and in my house is that I'm like ready to take a chance. I'm ready to not play so small and so safe and just show up. That mm -hmm. alone, I know will bring in yeah. more abundance. And so I think that yeah. if, if you're listening right now and you're thinking like, oh, but I'm stuck, just do one thing. Just start with one thing that Patricia yeah. taught us today and yeah. let me know in the group. One, like, yeah. yeah. And then absolutely jump into your group because I just think that the energy right now could use a breath of fresh air. For me, it's like with all this stuff going on outside, like the one thing that we can control is this home, like our house, a home and a sanctuary and work with the energy there. So at least, you know, when you're there, you're being supportive and you can kind of create your own bubble. Like that's, can I create our own bubble? You know, yeah. wherever we are. And yeah, that's it. Just start with one thing and then you'll get like energy from that and be like, oh, what's the next thing I could do? Yeah. It's like, it's just like a snowball effect. It's fantastic. Thank you so much, Patricia. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening. Let me ask you two quick questions. Have you subscribed? It's easy to do and helps you get alerts when a new episode is up in your favorite podcast app. And have you shared it with a friend? That's the simplest way to help grow the show and help more and more women over 40 thrive. I really appreciate you pressing play today. I know you have a lot going on and it's not lost on me. Until next time, take care and keep thriving. Spring has sprung. And with the change of seasons, sometimes comes an increase in vitality. If you're feeling in the mood for a little more personal time, may I suggest Coconu. Coconu is all about providing clean and natural ingredients when you're enjoying your most intimate moments with or without a partner. Naturally safe products developed by people who are obsessed with quality. Get 15% off with promo code GROWNASS at grownasswoman.guide forward slash Coconu. That's 15% off with promo code GROWNASS at grownasswoman.guide forward slash Coconu.